Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Beth Williams. I'm a prevention specialist uh, in substance abuse. Um, I've been in the field a while, uh, mostly in public health. Uh, right now I'm working as a trainer and educator for the University of Maryland Extension, which has an opioid project. Um, and if you have any, uh, you'd like to see more about our programs that we offer, uh, you can certainly contact me on my email, which is in the chat. We're going to be talking today about fentanyl and what parents need to know. We uh, have obviously all heard a lot about fentanyl and what's going on, and uh, it's in the news every day. Um, and I really do feel like the word of the day when we're talking about substance misuse is fentanyl. So we're going to give you a, a, a pretty good uh, bit of information on fentanyl. So the scope of the problem, as you can see, uh, in 2021, the DEA seized um, over 20 million fake pills and 15,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. Um, the lab analysis revealed that four of every 10 of the fake pills with fentanyl contained a potentially lethal dose. Um, and according to the CDC, um, synthetic uh, fentanyl overdose is the leading cause of death for people ages 18 to 48. And um, what we are seeing, we've kind of known this, but just as a reminder, drug traffickers often mix fentanyl with other drugs because fentanyl is cheap to manufacture. Uh, a small amount goes a long way and it is highly addictive. Additionally, it's very hard to detect because it has no smell or no, no taste. Okay. So in Maryland, uh, fentanyl continues to be the primary driver of overdose. Mortality, 81.7% uh, of all fatal overdoses uh, were fentanyl related. Um, there's a, some more data here. Um, beginning in June 22, I'm sorry, ending in June 22, there were actually in Maryland fewer fatal overdoses compared to the 12 month period before. Um, opioid related fatal overdoses decreased faster compared to fatal to overdoses of other substances, all other substances. Um, we are attributing this to the overwhelming use of Narcan. Um, there are Narcan training programs through health departments. Um, sometimes law enforcement does the training. There's a lot of Narcan um, availability out there, and we'll talk a lot about that toward the end of this webinar. Um, in 2020, you know, the number of fatal overdoses increased pretty um, by a pretty high number, 17, almost 18%. Um, and we all know that was because of the uh, pandemic and all the resulting health, mental health, um, you know, stress challenges that occurred. Um, but, you know, in 2021, in, in, uh, ah, having a hard time with my talking here, in 2021, overdoses increased by 0.8%. So there was a little bit of a downturn there. So we're going to talk briefly about generally, we're going to start with what is an opioid because fentanyl is an opioid. Um, and those of you that may have had a webinar similar to this before, this may be um, somewhat familiar, but it's always good to review. Um, a type of drug used to reduce pain um, includes opium derived and man-made or synthetic opioids. And effects include pain relief, euphoria, drowsiness, respiratory depression. So the family of opioids we see natural on the left there, and that includes things like morphine, codeine, and opium. It comes directly from the poppy plant. Um, Semi-synthetic opioids include Vicodin, Percocet, um, oxycodone, and heroin. Um, obviously, heroin is not a medical, uh, has no medical use whatsoever, but the other three um, and many more of those types of drugs are available through prescription to people who are experiencing pain. Um, and then fully synthetic drugs include fentanyl and methadone. So fentanyl does have medical use. Uh, it is used in hospitals. It's used for people that need pain relief. Um, sometimes they're available in patches where uh, it's a three-day dose in a fentanyl patch that can be worn on the skin and is released. It's a time-release um, dose. So there are definitely medical uh, uses for fentanyl um, and they, it does obviously need to be very carefully monitored by your doctor. 
So prescription opioids, just to look at this a little bit, um, the list, you know, we talked about some of them. These are all the available prescription opioids. Morphine is mostly used in hospital settings um, for people that, you know, if you've had surgery or um, an illness that caused a lot of pain, you were probably on morphine for that pain. Um, codeine at the bottom there, that's mostly seen in cough syrups um, that are uh, prescription. Uh, and then buprenorphine and methadone are opioids that are used to actually treat opioid addiction. So someone may be addicted to heroin, but they can go to a clinic and get methadone or buprenorphine and be med medically treated for their addiction. So what we're seeing a lot of now is counterfeit pills. So they are illegally mass produced pills. They are intentionally made to look like and they are falsely marketed as legitimate prescription opioids. So people may think they're going online, um, they're buying Oxycontins or Percocets, um, maybe Xanax, um, amphetamines like Adderall. Um, obviously these, it's still illegal to buy these online from someone who is not a uh, legitimate prescriber, but sometimes we're seeing youth um, trying to buy Adderall because they feel like if I can just you know, if I use Adderall, like my friends do, um, I might do better in school, I might have more energy, I might be able to get better grades, those kind of things. Or sometimes people go on and want to use uh, an Oxycontin or a Percocet, but they can't get it from their doctor because maybe they, the doctor has cut them off from that. Um, they don't have a doctor and they think they can just buy it online. Very often there, these um, counterfeit pills are containing fentanyl or methamphetamine and can be deadly. Um, those of you that live in Talbot County, you may have heard our sheriff talk extensively about this issue. Um, and in fact, they even did a film uh, and a presentation about counterfeit pills and those that contain fentanyl where young people are overdosing, thinking they're taking um, pills that are medicine that could be helpful to them. So this is a really big issue and we are addressing it in Talbot County and on the shore. Um, they're easily accessible, they're widely available, they're very easy to purchase. Um, like I said, online at any kind of e-commerce sites, it may be something that um, is promoting itself as an online pharmacy. Um, so very easily accessible. We'll talk a little more about that later in the presentation. Maybe delivered via meal or other delivery services. So when we are, um, when our kids are buying, you know, using these services, we just have to be vigilant. We don't want to assume anything, but as always, as parents, we want to be vigilant about um, the services they're using. <clears throat> Very often, counterfeit pills are sold on social media, like we said, online pharmacies that may not really be legitimate or other e-commerce e platforms. Uh, Snapchat is another one where they get messages on how to buy these uh, substances. Um, this makes it available to anyone that has a smartphone. And we all know that all of our children have smartphones and they're pretty smart in terms of getting around a lot of these platforms on there. Okay. So just some examples of what may be um, uh, counterfeit pills. We see this photo here. The authentic oxycodone looks like the left. The fake looks like the right. Um, these are pills that are primarily being made overseas. Uh, people can obtain the mold, the pill molds. The ingredients can be very um, fairly easy to access. People can get their the little uh, imprint uh, to make the pill look real. Sometimes they might alter it a little bit because they like to have their own little seal on there. Some of these um, drug distributors, illicit, we're talking illicit now. Um, but you can not tell much of a difference between those two pills. And on the right are some street names. We always kind of give these out just in case you hear any of these names. Um, that's what our kids are talking about right now. Aprazolam uh, is uh, that, that's a class of depressants that produce sed sedation, inducing sleep, uh, relieve anxiety. So frequently we hear these as you know Valium, Xanax, Ativan, Clonopin. Um, you see the street names uh, listed on the right there again. Um, I'm not going to tell you which one for a minute, but one of these is the authentic one, and one of them is the fake. Um, and actually, the one on the left is what real 
uh, genuine pharmaceutical uh, prescribed Xanax would look like. And on the right, uh, you can see how it looks there. Next one, we'll look at the amphetamines. Again, we see kids trying to buy Adderall or Ritalin online because they feel that it will help them in their school performance and maybe sports performance, uh, be able to really focus. Um, what we do know, and, and I think we did a couple months ago, we did a webinar here on amphetamines. Mm -hmm. And we do know that um, only um, people who are diagnosed with attention deficit disorders or um, actually like um, narcolepsy is another one, um, can benefit from these pills. So if a child has not been uh, diagnosed with attention deficit or hyper, hyperactivity disorder, taking Adderall is not going to help them. It is not going to increase their performance, help them pay better attention in school, stay focused, it will not help them. Um, so again, we see on the left versus the right, one is fake, one is real. Um, I'll tell you that the one on the left is real, the one on the right is fake. But you can see the markings, everything is very, very similar. It's very hard to tell if it's fake or if it's legitimately prescribed medication. Um, so non-pharmaceutical fentanyl um, is what we're going to probably spend the most of this webinar on. This is fentanyl that is not um, you know, legitimately used and prescribed for medical purposes. It is illicitly produced. It is a synthetic opioid. The pill form is packaged to look like prescription medications, like we just saw those uh, pills prior to this slide. Um, many, many of those pills are containing fentanyl because, um, again, it's cheap. It's easy to get. It's very easy for these manufacturers, these illicit criminal manufacturers to make prescription, I mean, I'm sorry, non-pharmaceutical fentanyl. Um, so they make these pills and some of them can be containing large amounts of fentanyl because it is so cheap. Uh, the powder form of non-pharmaceutical fentanyl looks like heroin. Um, we saw earlier it was a, like a brownish powder or a whitish powder and fentanyl and heroin together can be a deadly combination. Um, these are not the greatest slides, but I wanted to kind of show you. Um, these are coming from HIDA, which is high intensity drug trafficking areas. They're, it's a law enforcement efforts. So I can't show you the front uh, piece of it because they are um, bulletins that are um, not confidential, but you know should really not be widely shared in terms of how they got this information. But we had seizures of, me of meth methyl fentanyl or meth fentanyl. Um, in uh, Wicomico County Detention Center. Now that is a opioid that is just a variation of fentanyl. So you have other chemicals and things that are used in um, forming that batch that are making an even stronger fentanyl. Um, it can be, as you see in the bulletin, 400 to 6,000 times stronger than morphine, depending on um, you know, which different chemicals or isomers are used. Okay. Uh, the specific, specific one they found at the bottom was about 10,000 times more potent than morphine. And if, again, if we've all been, you know, if you've been in the hospital for surgeries or procedures, you know how strong morphine is. It's a very good pain reliever for medical use. Uh, this was another HIDA bulletin, fentanyl-laced marijuana being distributed in Northern Virginia. Um, fentanyl in its liquid form can be sprayed on marijuana. We have cases that that has happened in Maryland. Um, this was in Virginia, but um, we this was an alert to public health and law enforcement. <clears throat> so it also puts um, law enforcement uh, at, in danger of being exposed to fentanyl when they think they may be just confiscating marijuana. Um, so we know um, there can be powder fentanyl as well with marijuana. If anything that's in a powder form, you can sprinkle it or you can cook it down and make it into a liquid and spray it on something else. So marijuana is definitely not a safe drug to begin with. And then this puts um, young people at higher risk if they're um, using marijuana. Okay, so the DEA has some excellent resources for parents, excellent handouts. Um, they have a, a campaign called One Pill Can Kill. And um, according to what they are seeing, fentanyl is 50 to 100 times more powerful than morphine, 30 to 50 times more powerful than heroin, and just two to three milligrams is a fatal dose of fentanyl. 
So on the top picture here, you see on the side a ruler. And you, so you can see these vials are about uh, two inches tall. And on the left would be a, uh, the amount of heroin that would be a fatal dose. On the right, you see some sprinkles of you know, white grains of salt almost that it looks like. That would be a fatal dose of fentanyl. Um, down here where the penny is, you can see just that tiny bit of fentanyl compared to a penny is a fatal dose to one person. Okay. Rainbow fentanyl, you've probably heard a lot about this on the news. This is the big trend now. Um, it's the name of brightly colored pills or powders that look like candy, but are really synthetic opioids. Um, basically, um, again, uh, illicit fentanyl. They're produced in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Um, and they're dyed bright colors because the um, people who are distributing or manufacturing and distributing this want to get more young people interested in it um, and become addicted to opioids. Because of course their whole goal is once people are addicted then they become regular customers of the product. So these are some examples of what rainbow fentanyl looks like. Uh, you'll see the multicolored pills and as we all, you know, it can jump out to you that it looks like something like sweet tarts um, that kids could easily mistake um, for candy. Um, the pills are similar and look to party drugs like ecstasy and are meant to be more appealing to young people. On the left is just kind of like chunks, powdery uh, chunks of fentanyl, rainbow fentanyl that could be, you know, you would just cut a piece of that off and, and maybe, um, you know, press it further to get it really fine if you were going to inject it or um, inhale it through the nose. Okay. So how teens are exposed to fentanyl. Um, and this uh, will probably be pretty staggering because when I was doing some research on this, it kind of surprised even me, um, the things that go on to get kids uh, interested in using drugs. Um, messages, comments, and posts are dedicated to drug sales on the internet. Um, and they, there are illicit substances marketed to teens almost right in front of our eyes. Um, the, the messages are coming either from local vendors or, or through people who are affiliated with larger criminal groups or gangs that are manufacturing fentanyl. Um, social media obviously is a big platform, Snapchat. Um, what's the other one that they use sometimes? I know Snapchat is a big one. Um, internet pharmacies. Drugs are delivered through the mail or food delivery services, uh, and dealers often use emojis as kind of a code language. So um, the DEA has put out an emoji chart that I'm going to show you in a moment um, of how the dealer can signal that they have this for sale. And this might even be a local, you know, a friend or an acquaintance of, a, of your child who is, you know, let's go have a good time. And then they're using these um, emojis. So on the top, you'll see, um, and, and I would encourage you all to get a copy of this through the DEA. If you just um, Google DEA emoji chart, you can print out a copy and just keep it for your reference. But you'll see, um, you know, here's, here's what they use as emojis so they don't have to say over the internet, I have Percocet or I have Oxycodone, uh, Xanax, Adderall, um, the interesting one is here, the maple leaf that looks like the symbol for Canada is universal for drugs. Um, large batch is a cookie. Um, advertising, you can see over here on the left, uh, high potency, you can see they have a cannonball and a rocket and a, like an explosion. Um, heroin, you can see dragon because, uh, you know, we always hear um, people chasing heroin or as referred to as chasing the dragon. Um, cocaine, you see a lot of snow related as well, I think with, um, what was the other one that had snow in it? I thought there was another one on here, but, um, oh, I was looking maybe at the diamonds, the cocaine and similar with other drugs like methamphetamine, which are white powdery substances. Um, and then marijuana. Yeah, marijuana. marijuana down here. You see the palm trees, you know, everything real natural. Um, so, and even cough syrup, you see the grape uh, and a purple heart, mushrooms, obviously. So um, I would really encourage everyone to go to the DEA and download this. They have a whole kit 
of information that people can have to help them identify drugs. But also, I think this is really important to have. Um, not to say that every time you see this emoji on your child's uh, social media or, or internet communications, that that means they're into something. But it means if we see it frequently, we may want to ask about it or do some more you know, monitoring and just be a little more alert. You know, as with any um, looking into drug use by youth, we don't want to um, overreact or accuse, but at the same time, we want to be very uh, observant, look for patterns of behavior, look for sudden changes in behavior, uh, you know, things that two weeks ago they weren't doing, and now all of a sudden they're on their uh, computer all the time, and a lot of these emojis are coming up. So, you know, we always have to have that balance, don't we, when we're parents on um, being protective, but also, um, you know, wanting to trust. Um, I always say trust, but verify it if you have any uh, concerns. Um, so there's that emoji codes. Does anybody have any questions so far? You want to check in the chat real quick and get there? Thank you. At the end. Okay. Or, or, or we can wait yeah, to the end. Can, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Packaging and marketing. Um, this is interesting because it is just incredible to me the lengths that people will go to transport or market um, deadly substances to our youth. It just is staggering to the mind. Um, you can see on the left here, this was a really big seizure. These two pictures on the left that happened in um, Los Angeles airport over the last week or so. These are legitimate packages of candy, but they dumped out the candy like in the Whoppers box and packed it full of counterfeit pills. Um, this over here, there's some cookies, there's some, uh, I think there's Skittles under here somewhere. Um, and there was a quote from one of the people who was on the seizure that inside the sweet tarts, Skittles and Whoppers candy boxes were fentanyl pills. So even though this isn't packaged as a drug, it is a way for dealers to disguise it, to get it to where they need it to be. And also for people that are using to hide it in plain sight. Um, we see this a lot with counterfeit, um, I mean, uh, with uh, marijuana gummies and, and edibles, that it's packaged in a way that unless you really looked and studied the package, you would think it was Skittles or, you know, whatever. So um, on the right is, was another seizure in New York City. Um, you can see lots of bags of pills. You can see some of this uh, green and pink that looks like it could be... Um, some kind of candy, like um, individually wrapped hard candy or something. But what gets me about this one is they were transporting a huge volume of uh, counterfeit fentanyl pills in a Lego box. It's like a Lego thing. Yeah, looks like a Lego box. So if that came to your house or to somebody's house and a young child got into that thinking it was Legos, it would be disastrous. So again, um, people that do this, even people that kids will say it's their friend, these are not their friends. These are people that do not have the best interest of anyone at heart. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. Um, signs of, uh, this came from uh, Overdose Lifeline, which is a company that we use a lot of their pre uh, presentations. They have a really good one on opioids. I think we've done some of them on this platform for you all, but just uh, some of the signs to look for. Um, and you may wanna, I don't know if you can screenshot this or not, or we could you know, make it available to you at some point, um, cause it's a pretty exhaustive list, but you'll see some of the signs of misuse. Um, so there's physical signs like the constricted pupils, uh, maybe they're wearing long sleeves or covering their arms or their legs. Um, with winter clothes when it's 95 degrees outside. Um, they may be itchy and there may be scratches on their skin, a lack of hygiene. Um, Health-wise, you will see weight loss of people that are pretty much using most substances, most uh, drugs, because they have put that drug as a priority over eating. So they may not have appetite or may just not want to eat. They may get nausea, vomiting, or constipation. Um, women may cease getting periods, um, depression, or changes in appetite or sleep. Behavioral, we see a lot of the nodding off with opioids. Um, 
we see they, you know, what we see in many um, other drug use um, issues, problems in school or work, uh, losing friends, a new set of friends, um, maybe spending more time away from home or work, loss of interest in any activities or hobbies that maybe they were really into for a while, um, and some legal trouble. What you may notice in your environment or what you may find may include um, missing money or credit cards or checks or valuables. Um, again, when that drug becomes uh, more important to the person than anything else, they will do anything they have to do to get it. And that may include stealing, pawning things, uh, returning purchases for refunds so they can use that money, um, constantly requesting money, <clears throat> or more frequent secret phone calls or phone texts or, you know, getting on a computer, you know, more frequently or at different odd times. Some of the things you may find might be um, things like cotton balls um, when somebody and, and syringes and tourniquets, when somebody is using a drug and injecting it, they will um, often put it like in a little bottle cap or in a little um, piece of aluminum foil um, with some water and kind of melt it down, if you will, or liquidate it so that they can inject it. And they may, um, they will use then a, um, a syringe or I'm looking on here. Okay, we have empty spoons. So you may have spoons um, that they might use to also put a powder in and then cook it over um, a lighter or to, to melt it down. Um, and then they will use the syringe and the needle, but they'll put the needle, they'll draw it up through a cotton ball so that it kind of, the cotton ball is kind of like a filter so that they can inject that. Um, obviously you might see Ziploc bags or paper bags or paper folded up in a little tiny package. Um, you might have loose change or um, dollar bills with powdery substance on it. If they're um, snorting the substance, it might be through a dollar rolled up dollar bill or a straw or even a pen cartridge where they will take the, the uh, ink cartridge out and just snort through the uh, tube of the pen. Um, so those are things that you could look for. Along with, um, you know, if there are like we saw with the packaged candy, you know, look for that in odd places or when you see um, a lot of candy in a kid's room, maybe look at the package because um, we could probably do at some point a webinar on um, marijuana edibles and we could show you some of the ways that those are packaged as well. But they'll put it in something that looks like pop tart, a pop tart uh, package, but it'll say pot tart. Um, just to market this so parents will be tricked to thinking that their kid's just eating Pop-Tarts. Okay. So signs and symptoms of opioid overdose, um, sh slow, shallow, or not breathing at all, nodding out or falling asleep. Uh, we saw about the constricted pupils before. It may be difficult to see that if the person's in an emergency situation. Um, loud snoring, choking, or gurgling noises. Um, some people describe that as almost like a really deep, like a rattling in the chest. Um, lips or fingertips turn blue, gray, or purple. A limp body, but um, there have been reports that people using fentanyl, uh, perhaps because of other things that it might be mixed with, uh, can be rigid instead of a limp body. Um, the skin pale, gray, or clammy, and a slow or erratic pulse. So again, opioids slow everything down. So when somebody has overdosed, everything slows down to you know, obviously very near death. <clears throat> so we'll talk a little bit about overdose and things that people can do because I know there were some requests about Narcan and um, I was even at a presentation yesterday about another subject and people were asking for more information about Narcan. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But an overdose um, obviously happens when a toxic amount of an opioid or mixed with another opioid or other drugs um, can overwhelm the body's ability to handle it. So immediately that can cause respiratory failure, which then can cause a lack of oxygen in the blood, which then caused, can cause vital organs starting to fail, which leads to unconsciousness, coma, and then death if it's not caught in time. Um, what we need to important uh, what we need to realize that's important is that uh, people may or may not realize that there is fentanyl mixed with their heroin or other drugs, even marijuana. Um, but if somebody exhibits these signs, we have to assume that fentanyl is involved. Um, we've had cases in our county where people 
uh, you know, the EMS is called to an overdose and the person says, well, we were only doing cocaine. We weren't doing any opioids, but obviously the cocaine was cut with fentanyl. Um, same with marijuana. There have been cases where, you know, kids will think that they're just getting high on marijuana, but it is also um, laced or sprayed with fentanyl. Um, also, we ha always have to keep in mind that some overdoses are accidental. So maybe people um, were using counterfeit pills that they thought were uh, Adderall, but actually, actually it was fentanyl. Um, sometimes people that are legitimately prescribed opioids um, may um, forget how much they took or may lose track of the dose or, you know, I don't feel well, I'm still having pain, I'll take another one. So, um, you know, we see many overdoses that are also accidental. Okay. So what is naloxone? Um, it is a medication that reverses opioid overdose by restoring breathing. Um, it wears out in 30 minutes to two hours. It is very, very safe. Um, if somebody is not having an overdose, but they are administered Narcan, it's not going to hurt them. And what you're seeing there is um, what is distributed through health departments now. Um, it is an internasal, intranasal administration. Um, there's no potential for misuse of naloxone. It is not going to get somebody high. Um, it, there's no way that a person can get any, you know, mind altering effect from naloxone. Um, it will not, however, cure their addiction or get the drug out of their system. Um, its only purpose is to restore breathing for a short period of time while a person is overdosing. Um, there's no effect on someone who has not taken opioids. Uh, the side effects are very minimal and very rare. Um, I've never heard of any side effects, um, and I've been doing Narcan training um, almost five years. Um, naloxone or Narcan, they're interchangeable. Um, uh, Narcan is the brand name, um, is only effective in reversing overdoses involving opioids. Okay. So the first thing, if you come up on someone who you think may be overdosing, is to call 911. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, you may not have any Narcan on you or enough uh, for that person if they are overdosing. Um, Narcan is only temporary. I have 30 to 90 minutes here. Um, the previous slide said two hours. Um, so, you know, an hour and a half to two hours, it's only going to last. Person may have complications or other health problems that are causing them to have these symptoms. They may, you know, it may be a hot day and they're having um, reaction to the heat and they pass out. Um, they may need more naloxone than we have, or they may be having a non-opioid overdose. It could be another drug that is not necessarily an overdose, but is still making them sick. Okay. So this is a long list. I'm not going to expect everybody to remember this, but these are just kind of tips that we give people when we do our classes on how to use Narcan. Uh, call 911, as we said. Put your phone, if you can, put your phone on speaker so that you can put it down while you're tending to the person. Um, safely look for possible signs of drug use or signs of what else this may be that's causing this person to pass out. Um, and obviously tell the 911 operator what you observe. Um, I, I start with this one because your safety is the utmost importance um, and the person's safety as well. So if it's a situation that you're very uncomfortable with, you may wanna call the 911 operator and just kind of back up a little bit. Um, your safety is the utmost importance in, any, in addressing any situation like this. Um, try to gently rouse the person, person, only using the sternum rub as a last resort. We used to tell people to use sternum rub, which is using your fist to rub against their breastbone or their sternum, because that is a very painful experience and usually wakes somebody up if they're sleeping, for example. Um, According to some people I know uh, in emergency management services or emergency uh, medical services, they don't like to use the sternum rub um, except as a last resort trying to wake the person up because it can cause injury to or, or bad bruising. Um, if possible, tilt the person's head back and ascertain if their airway is open and if it can be cleared. Um, again, we used to advise people back a few years ago to use their fingers um, with gloves, if you can, to um, kind of do a swipe through their mouth. But we, um, again, have been, uh, we've revised that to say, you know, if you can look in there and if you can safely grab something out of their mouth, 
um, to do that. But um, if the person, if it just does not seem that it would be a safe move, um, certainly don't feel like you have to do that um, because you will be putting them in, in um, a position where you, you'll try to keep their airway clear. Um, administer the Narcan, one spray in each nostril with the person's head tilted back if you can. Wait one to three minutes, and during that time, you can administer CPR or rescue breaths. Again, if you have a, a rescue mask, um, if you're comfortable doing that or trained doing that. Um, if there's no reaction, administer another dose of Narcan and then put the person in the recovery position, which is what you see on the bottom there. Um, they're on their side. They have one arm in front of them, one arm under their head to keep their head elevated a bit. Um, to try to keep that airway open and to, uh, if they vomit, they won't aspirate and uh, choke. And try to stay with the person until medical help arrives. I know that's a lot of information, but um, at the very most, if, if all you can do, if the person is in a position where, um, you know, they're wedged somewhere, we see a lot of overdose in public bathrooms or in cars, and they may be wedged to a point well, you can't do anything else for them. You can't try to get to the airway. You can't put them in the recovery position. Um, all, if all you can do is give the Narcan, that's the most important piece. Um, and again, you may do that, wait one to three minutes and um, give another dose. Most people, when they get, um, when they're able to obtain Narcan, either through a health department or another, a pharmacy, um, they'll give you a box with two doses. And hopefully by the time you've had to use those two doses, uh, EMS will be on the scene. And we always ask to try to persuade the person to accept medical help or go to the hospital because they may, um, that may be a way to get them kind of into a system of care where a peer support person or an addictions person can talk to them while they're in the hospital and maybe engage them um, in getting some care. And um, we always wanna be prepared and be safe um, for the person to react as they're coming out of the overdose. Sometimes people get angry. Sometimes they're frightened. They are embarrassed. They try to get away. So um, once you've given the Narcan, you know, if it seems like it may not be safe, if that person wakes up and, and you know, upset, um, be sure that you remove your stuff back a few steps. Okay. Um, so what can we do? Um, what can parents do? What can all of us do about um, this uh, just overwhelming amount of fentanyl that is out there right now in our communities. Um, and we go back to that safe prescription use, which we've talked about this before. It's, um, you know, prevention programs are based on the, some of these messages. Um, only use medications prescribed by a licensed medical professional and dispensed by a legitimate pharmacy. Um, otherwise, you cannot know for certain if it's fake or not. So we don't want to be alarmist, but again, we want to make sure that people are being as thorough as they can about their medications. Um, anyone who gets pills from anywhere other than a pharmacy should assume that they are counterfeit and may contain or do contain potentially deadly amounts of fentanyl. Uh, like we said, we are seeing some of that happening where youth are using these counterfeit pills and then um, overdosing. Do not prescribe, do not accept any prescribed medication from anyone that is offered or shared with you. So we all have friends who say, oh, well, I was sick and I used this and I have some pills left over. Would you like them? Um, we don't want to do that. That's um, even before this uh, overwhelming amount of fentanyl use was out there. Um, we don't want to do that. It's just not a good safety practice with medications. Um, anything that's prescribed legitimately um, is prescribed to the specific person for their specific uh, situation or condition. Um, and it depends on their weight, their height, their gender, their age. Um, it's kind of specially formulated, if you will, for the specific individual. So to share that, um, at the very least, it's not probably going to be as effective for the other person, but it could also be really dangerous because they may uh, have other medications that they're on, or it could have gotten in the wrong hands and been um, laced with something else. Um, and again, just good practices, do not share or give our own medications with anyone other than who they're prescribed to. Um, if you're unsure about something, if it just does not feel right to you, use a fentanyl testing strip. Um, those are available through your local health departments. You can call and I believe they will just give you one or mail it to you. 
Um, keep Narcan available for any opioid use. Uh, most pharmacies, I know um, I live in Easton, when I get my prescriptions, I go to the giant pharmacy and they have a big sign that if you are getting an opioid medication prescribed to you, they will give you Narcan if you ask for it. Um, so when you're filling a prescription or um, you should ask for that, uh, just have it in the house. It's just a good prevention and safety measure um, for just your normal medical use of opioids. Um, and um, most local health departments will also um, give out Narcan. And I don't even think at this point that you need training anymore to get it. I think you can just request to have Narcan because they want to get it out in the community. Since it is so easy to use with that uh, intranasal um, you know, little plunger and uh, syringe that you have, it's very, very easy to use and safe. Uh, and again, just to end, just to store all medications safely and dispose of all expired, unused, or unneeded medications. We want to make sure that this stuff does not get into the hands of young people um, who may, you know, feel pressured to use it or, you know, share it with others. Okay, I think that's the last slide. Um, are there any questions? And real quick, I just wanted to add um, that just like another common trend that we're seeing, Talbot County seeing, the Eastern Shore seeing, is vaping and marijuana, and that you know our teens are doing. So they're you know liquidizing this marijuana and putting it in a vape, and they're inhaling it, smoking it, whatever. Um, there were two cases on the shore with the students. Um, those students were vaping, they almost, they pretty much almost overdosed and they were sent to the hospital. Um, and what they believed is that the marijuana they put in the vape was laced with fentanyl and these two students almost died. Mm -hmm. So even just something as simple as vaping is getting extremely dangerous for everybody. So I just wanted to put, put that out there. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let me, I gotta do this. Thank you all so much for attending. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, we appreciate your time. But there is a, are we able to walk in and get Narcan from the health department? You should be able to. I think if you go into the health department and just ask for the prevention office or the addictions office, they should be able to give it to you right away. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, I did put our emails in, but because um, we got, I got to log in and log back out to do some changes. Um, I can put my email and best email in, in case you guys can give any questions. Also, so all of our webinars are going to be shared on TCPS social media. Um, I've had people reach out asking if they can share them with um their employer staff at, the, at their work yes you can share this with whoever you want to mm -hmm. share our webinars with um in. and i can i can send you our recorded webinars as well um through email and yeah, i'm gonna have her to. put her email in Um, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Give me a second for any more questions or people type in their email. Another question Is the nasal Narcan new to the market? Um, prior to about four or five years ago, it, you could only administer Narcan uh, either through uh, intravenous, you know, through medical. Uh, people in the EMS units could give it to somebody as a shot or intermuscular shot as well. Um, or you had to kind of put a syringe together and then draw the Narcan up out of a little bottle and try to administer it to the person that way. Um, since this, um, the development of this new, uh, looks like a nasal spray bottle, which is really what it is. Um, we have been able to um, distribute Narcan much more across the board to the community. So even a young child could use this if they had to. It's very, very easy to use. One squirt up the nose, 
the plunger, it's a, it's a one use dose. Um, you, you know, if you need to use the second one, you use that, but um, it's, it's extremely easy to use. So I would say uh, we started doing really widespread Narcan training to, to just general, the general public um, back in 2016, I believe, or 2017 here in, in our county. So that's when it became available. So we should have this like, the band-aids like okay like we have, yeah, yeah yeah so it's very um mm -hmm. it's, it's very much out there accessible so like she said you can get it from the health department mm -hmm. i'm sure you can ask a certain doctor for right yeah um, it's yeah it's very accessible yes um and if you have someone in your family that is legitimately on prescribed opioids strongly advise that you have it uh, in the house or on your person. Um, also, let me put a plug in for our sheriff's department because we have a save a life program at the Talbot County Sheriff's Office. Uh, and they that um, is for businesses to be able to put um, like a uh, storage box, almost like an AED uh, or something on your wall. And it has two boxes of Narcan in it. It's got rubber glove, I mean, I'm sorry, latex gloves and uh, breathing masks in it and information. So uh, if you're in a business or you have a business uh, and you would like to have that readily available on site at your business, um, you can email me because I will be the person that will be um, taking care of that now. If you want to have the Narcan there, but you'd also like to have a, a very brief session on Narcan, uh, we can certainly do that as well. So if you um, call me or you can call the sheriff's office uh, and just ask for the save a life program. Very easy, simple to do. We can get it right out to you and then you'll have it on site at your uh, workplace. Yeah, great questions, guys. Um, does anybody else have question, comment? And if you don't think of it now, please feel free to reach out to either one of us for any more questions. All right. Well, thank right. you, everybody, for attending. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day, rest of their week, and stay safe out there. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you.